Hiya from Nebraska, y'all. It's Square Peg, and we are going to see if we can find out when, oh when, is America going to be made great again? See if we can figure something out. Surprisingly, the phrase, as early as I could find, all the way back in 1940, there was, oh, I'm on the wrong page, there was a Republican senator named Alexander Wiley, and here's the quote. America needs a leader who can coordinate labor, capital, and management, who can give the man of enterprise encouragement, who can give them the spirit which will beget vision. That will make America great again. <sighs> Truly inspired. I don't know, I didn't have any uh, information about him like using it. He w didn't run for president at all, as far as I'm aware of, so, but I guess that's where the phrase originated. But the first person who used it in a presidential campaign was Barry Goldwater in 1964. He was a Republican, and he was running against Johnson. And he lost. That's why he has an X. Next, we have Ronald Reagan, who used it as part of his campaign in 1980. He was more successful. Perhaps he had more charisma or something. Surprisingly enough, after Reagan, the next person to use it as part of their presidential campaign was Bill Clinton. And he was also successful. He has a circle under his initials there because he also won. And he used this same phrase. I was very surprised to find that. So then we find ourselves at our 1998 flip date. And this is the author of a book, Octavia E. Butler. And she used this phrase as a campaign slogan for the dictator in her book, Parable of the Talents, dystopian novel, it says. The dictator's name was Andrew Steele Jarrett. So I have ASJ up here and A is one, S is 19, and J is one. So that's interesting, <laughs> just, just for fun. Moving on, we have a uh, the female side of the Clinton family, Bill Clinton used this phrase in television commercials for his wife's campaign for president and was not as successful as he was for himself. So she has an ex she lost. And next we have another book. And this was written by the T-Man. The book was Time to Get Tough, Making America Great Again. He also used it in an interview in 2011, same year as this book came out, 2011. Then there was a revision of the book, a second edition of the same book that came out in 2015. It was a slight change from Making America Great to Make America Great. So there's that. And then in 2012, supporters of the T-Man actually filed papers in Texas to create a new political party with this name so that the T-Man could run as a third party candidate in 2012. Also in 2012, Trump formally began using the phrase the day after Obama beat Romney. So he didn't actually run in 2012, but the very next day after those elections, he started using that phrase. It was in 2015, the year the, the revision of his book came out, that it says it was registered as a service mark for campaign purposes. The phrase was. Now, I think it must be something similar to a copyright. He had the phrase copyrighted but it says it was registered as a service mark, and I'm not exactly sure what that means, if there's a difference, and if there is, what that difference is. Yeah. All right, so then we have just, the team man has taken this on, has his own, and all of his supporters, and we have three elections here. The first one he won, the second one he lost, and the third one remains a mystery. So, of course, I wanted to look at how isometrical all of these things are, Right off the bat, I noticed that 1980 is 18 years to our major flip date, and another 18 years out is 2016. 
So both of those were winning campaigns by Republicans. They are very matchy-matchy. Yeah? Then we have this lunar cycle of 60 years from Barry Goldwater, who lost. He was a Republican who lost. Out 60 years brings us to 2024, which is still a mystery. But if we want to base it on this one data point, which, of course, I don't recommend basing anything on just one data point, but he lost. So that would be a checkbox in the wah wah category for the team and supporters. But there was other stuff that I have hiding under here because this is not a two scale uh, rendition. You know, you can see that my 18s are not equal in, in length here, right? <laughs> so I did a little bit of a better job in making it to scale under here. So let me, uh, I'm going to pause it. I'll be right back. I'm really into this mapping idea. I've been talking about it, but I haven't done a whole lot of it. But just seeing what the ripples look like, if you just map it, you know, without all of the data enmeshed in there and making, trying better to make it to scale, right? So these hash marks are just 20 year increments on the bottom. And then I have the dates up here, 1940, 64, 80, right? So this is kind of interesting. It's not looking like this up here should suggest where you're looking at a palindrome. These are widely spaced. And if it was a palindrome formation, it would be widely spaced over here too. It still could do that. We know that we have a flip date out here in 21, 2021, right? So it could be turning around right here and it just, you know, we're not out there far enough to see this happen yet, right? But right now it just looks like if you were to, you know, drop a ping pong ball onto a table, it would boing, 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 you know, or skip a rock across the lake. You know, it's going to have the same phenomenon here that we're looking at, which I thought was really neat because it's not, it's not a palindrome yet, right? But what does that mean for making America great? Does that mean that we're like, you know, it's getting closer and closer together and we must be almost there? I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But it's interesting, and I have one more thing to share, but this is so messy that I kind of want to clean it up a little bit before I show the last little bit about Nixon. So hold on. All right, this is where things get real interesting. So we have Reagan here in 80, and that connects over our 2021 flip date to 2022. Sorry, 2001 to 2022 right? These are connected. But 2022 is not an election year. So I was like, hmm, okay. Well, Nixon here was elected in 72. And at the time he was the incumbent and he was very, very popular. That's why he won again. And 72 over our major 98 flip date, brings us out to 2024. There's, there's the connection. So we have 26 years here, 26 years over on this side, over the main 98 flip date, and then from Reagan to 22, 21 years here to 01, and another 21 years, yeah? So then I wanted to see, okay, what happened between 72 and 74 when Nixon resigned? Well, he got into some shenanigans and he got caught and I'm not a crook, but I'm resigning so you don't impeach me, right? By the time he left office, he was not at all popular. Started out very popular, not at all popular, right? So if we're thinking about this connects out here to 24 and you work this way, because it's a palindrome, right? So we're going back this way to 22, two years, two years, right? So whoever gets elected in 24 will be very popular at the time of their election, but perhaps is not very popular now because that would be the matchup, right? I, I don't have any, nothing is popping into mind about who would, who encapsulates that description, right? But then I really wanted to look here. So Reagan here went 
from 80 to 88, two terms, right? But we also know that he had a pretty serious case of dementia, and it's unclear. I don't know that anyone's ever actually, like, come out and said, yes, the dude had dementia, we admit it, you know, H.W. was running the show, and it started at this date. All we know is that sometime in there, that's what happened. H.W., the VP, basically took over because the president himself was no longer able to, right? So let's look over here at the matching dates. We have 22 back to 14. And who was president in 14? So if you think about maybe our current dude in the egg office has perhaps a similar scenario as when this guy left office, right? They're both going to leave office in a not the best frame of brain. And someone else is most likely running the show now, just like that happened back then, right? I'm going to guess it probably wasn't, it's not going to be uh, the VP again, yeah? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sort of stuttering and stalted because I'm trying to hobo code my way through this without getting tagged, right? So, there's been lots of speculation that the current egg office dude is not in charge and the person who is was perhaps the person who was president back here. Yeah? So, I think this is all just kind of interesting and of course, it's all in the news, you know, who's going to who's going to take care of the crazy situation we've got going on over there and make America great again. So there you go. That's what I got for you. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.